My name is Margot Sheik. I work with Kibble Equipment. We're going to just uh, kind of wrap up your day here, your morning here, learning about our monitors, uh, our Seedstar 4 monitor uh, that you guys should all have on your planters. Uh, you're here because you have an electric drive planter or you know, a 5E or an exact emerge, and this is what you look at when you jump in the cab. Um, so we're just going to mostly uh, focus on the planter side of things. This does have exact rate, so I can show you a couple things um, with the fertilizer side. Um, it is very uh, integrated and seamless, uh, much different than running a rate controller, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and uh, then we'll just talk a little bit about section control and things like that, layouts for pages. But I'll tell you this, if there's anything that you guys would rather see or got questions on or, you know, maybe something jogs your memory from last year, let's go there and let's talk about that because that's why we're here. So, but I'm just going to kind of kick off by walking through the different home pages that Deere gives us from the factory. So on this planner in particular, there's four home pages for the planner. Okay. A little overkill, but there's some things in each one that make them a little nice. And I'll show you the one I like the most. Um, so the first one here is the one I like the most. It's called Planner Details. And uh, I'll come back and spend more time here, but the reason I like it is um, you always have your population monitor on the bottom, and then you can kind of go into the other tiles to adjust all the other things on the planner. But you always got your eye on the population. That's why I like that. And then of course I have a map view here that I can tap open, look at, blow up, blow back down, and have what I need here. So. Um, the next page that we have is the planner overview page. I see a lot of guys watching this one. It's not bad because you got that bigger kind of map view that guys like to watch to watch their coverage. Um, and here's where we also have a shortcut to fire up our EPG, a shortcut to fold and unfold the planner. Um, and then we have our different monitors on the bottom so we can kind of toggle from population. Of course, once you hit your tiles, you, they kind of become a menu on the left hand side and you can kind of come down and look at the downforce singulation spacing whatever one you want to look at so that's kind of how that page is laid out um, why we're here because this is part of a home page this plant mode and fairing control button i'm going to go there next because that's probably one of the first things we're going to have to do if you haven't hooked up yet is to unfold the planner okay and if this is your first year with one of these you'll notice there's no switch box in the cab your switch box is now in the monitor and even if you had one last year if you're like me it's been about 300 and some days since we've had to do this. I, it's, like, it's like my first day at work all over again. So um, more than likely you're gonna be folded up. So you're gonna be in transport mode. And it makes sense once you start looking at it, it is basically a switch box. All the options that you had to flip on your switch box are now in the monitor. And um, if we wanna unfold this planner, you're gonna need your number one and your number two SCV to unfold just like before. Um, however, you gotta tell it on the monitor what function we're going to control with that SCV. So when you're unfolding a planner, um, for example, um, more than likely you're going to lower your draw bar down right first to get that into position. So you're going to select that under, you have two SCVs here, right? Your frame, so your number one, and then your marker, number two. So then you'll turn it on. So now we have activated the draw bar function. I can run number two and it's going to suck that cylinder down, okay, to lower it down into place. And then when you get that where you want it, you can flip down, Okay, I'm ready to unlatch my tongue. Tongue latch, got to re-enable it. Now I've flipped that switch on. Now I can run number two again to flip my latch back. And then you kind of get the idea. Wing fold on, we're going to unfold the planter. Trans lift, suck your cylinders down in the back, get that done. And then lastly, you probably put your wing wheels on number one down, or maybe you might do that first, but get those down too. That's on number one. So that's folding and folding. There is an automated function inside this. Um, you're seeing this easy fold. We can program this to basically in one button press, um, you just kind of press and hold the SCV in one button press and it will do all of it in order the way it should automatically. We've preset the heights that we want to drop the draw bar down to to unfold and um, all those sort of things. So it is, it can be done, it works well. Um, it's not on, I, maybe it's not been set up on this one yet, um, but that is a feature inside the Seedstar 4 platform. So that's what that looks like. But since I'm training today, I'm gonna flip it over to plant, because if you, when you're all done folding, flip it over to plant, right? Because there might be some functions that won't work until we flip over into plant. Okay, 
Now, um, I'll page over to the next one. We've got, oh, this is our default uh, page. I'm going to talk about uh, automation in a little bit, but our SCVs here, this is your tractor run page. Um, we can, if we're going to do that easy fold and if we automate our vacuums, you'll notice that these, that's not set up, but you'll see these all set to auto um, on the SCV page when they are. And then this is our fertilizer page, um, kind of half planter, half fertilizer, I would say, uh, view for the exact rate. So the, I guess you got your, your rate box here to adjust your rates for your starter, uh, set a preset and pick it. And then inside here, we can get into uh, the tank system app for the, for, you know, when you fill, just reset the full. Um, and then underneath, we get into some configuration and make sure your, all your sections are on. Underneath, just about anything you can configure. This is how you turn on your pump. It's on your number one, it's, with, it's all tied into your number one SCV. There's no extra hydraulics required for exact rate. So that's kind of a nice feature with the John Deere system. And then um, it's all kind of tied into with the planter raise lower system. So it will engage and kick on when you, it's down on its height switch. So. Um, that's kind of how that works in here on the exact rate side. And this is a map or a guidance homepage. And then lastly, I think this is where we started planner summary, maybe. So uh, it wasn't, we started on details. So this is my last, another layout here with a half page planner, half page map, some auto track controls. So, um, so like I said, I spend most of my time here under details and then I like to set up my shortcut bar. Um, so home pages are customizable, shortcut bars are customizable. Um, so I'm gonna walk through how to customize the shortcut bar real quick and show you how I like it. I hope you like it too. So under menu, um, when we use this monitor, the menu has three sections. Machine settings is always gonna be relate back to the onboard machine that we're in. So it's gonna be combine settings, tractor settings. You mean you'll see hydraulic engine transmission apps in here under machine settings, as well as this is where all the apps for the exact rate are hanging out is under machine settings. Applications, if you think about your old 2630 menu, you had a GS3 button we'd go into, that's what this button is now. Applications are all your AMS apps, your fields, your boundaries, your auto track, your turn automation, section control, all that stuff. That's where that lies now. And then under system, this is where we will use, we'll most likely be here to do two things the software manager and the file manager. Software manager to pull down new payloads for, for the monitor, you can do that over the air. File manager to get your data on or off. Whether you're doing it with a USB or if we're doing it wirelessly, it'll all, it, it comes in and out through the file manager, okay? I'll talk about that a little later. But the reason we came in here was because we needed to lay out some shortcut bars, right? So under applications, you will find the layout manager. It's all in ABC order. There it is. All right, this can be somewhat complex. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Um, but your options in here are all run pages at the bottom, shortcut bars, run page sets. So the ones that we're scrolling through on the front, on the home screens, that's a set, okay? If there's things in that set that we don't need, for example, I don't need a guidance page in my set. I have enough guidance shortcuts as it is. I can come in here and edit my set and take this tap on this guidance and remove it. And now it's I hit save. And now instead of having six pages, I have five pages. Got some of the clutter out of there. Okay. Um, I didn't delete the page. It went down under all run pages. It's just not in my set. So if I come down to all run pages, that one I took away is now unused. Okay. Still there, didn't get rid of it. And it's a default one, it's never gonna let me trash can it. Okay, anything, so here's what I made myself last round, okay? I can delete it because it was a custom one, okay? If you have a, so let's say you really love the fertilizer page, but I really, I really wanna see my map there, okay? What you could do is take this one, so I'm, once again, I'm under all run pages, you can create a new one, by just from scratch. So if you hit add, you got a blank slate, put in what you want. That's a little overwhelming for us. 
So sometimes what I like to do is take one I already, already using, a default one, and then I like to copy it, okay? So now I've copied it, and there's things I like, things I don't like, right? So then I can come in here and maybe take these two apps in the bottom away. Oops, sorry, I got ahead of myself. I got to delete something first, right? So I got to remove a couple things out and then add back in. And I might come in and hit my mapping screen and try to find something that will fit in there. There should be something, I think. Yeah, last one. All right, I feel better, I like that. I can say, hey, I'm gonna call this SPR22, Spring22, all right. Save it. Okay, so I've created a new page and it's down here, right? And it's unused. To get it back in my set now, I'm gonna come back to my sets, edit, I'm gonna do a couple things. I don't need this one anymore, right? Because I made a new one, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Out of my set. Don't did I not hit okay? Okay. And then, so I have my th three planner pages, right? And now I'm gonna include additional run pages. There's my spring that's unused. And I should be good to go. Let's go look at it. So there's my planner details. Overview. There's my new fertilizer page. Not bad. So. I didn't do my shortcuts yet though. So um, go back down there. Here are the shortcuts I like. I skipped over that. Shortcut bars. Usually you can create a whole new shortcut bar if you want. And sometimes you might want to, one for planting, one for the grain cart. Um, I usually just kind of pull them in and out each season. It seems to be simpler. So I'm gonna take away things I don't need. Okay. And what I usually do, then you, so you gotta open up space, so now you're gonna add things back in. I always make sure I have a section control button in here. You know your check mark for your master on off for section control. I like to push that one in here, get that one in there. And then I like to make sure over here, I like to put the Seedstar app just by itself so I can open up the whole controller and just be in it. I also typically put under Seedstar the fast start button And I still have an opening here, so I'll go back under applications. Maybe I'll put in I think I think I usually put swap track in here. You guys use swap track? So if you if you're using A B lines for your headlands, you can build a set inside your guidance app and then you just hit with one Breton press, you change your line. You can kind of build them in order and swap, swap, swap from each of your A B lines. So I built my bar, should be saved. Okay, so that's, this is the one I usually set up for planners. If you're doing other apps that are like automation or sharing, then I would put those in there too. But for a standard planner, uh, the reason I do this is when I have the planner down in the field working, these first three bars inside the work setup here should always be green, right? I'm down, I'm planting, it's, work, it's making a map, I'm auto tracking. Everything's good for status there. And then um, my section control's on, okay? So that's why I set that up that way. Um, now, I also have my, uh, so I have my guidance shortcut down here. That's why I don't need a guidance page. And then um, I also put in two seed star ones, one that says fast start, it's kind of grayed out, and one that says seed star. So the fast start, if you remember the old hydraulic dry planners had something called quick start. It's called fast start on electric dry planner. There's very little lag for our system to start now with it being electric and brush belt delivery. But this is that button to enable that. So when you put your planner down, you got fast start for the first six seconds. If you sit there for longer than that, this will restart that timer, you know, to help minimize that gap when we're restarting. That's why I put that there. And then lastly, the seed star app. So I'm gonna dive into this next because I think I, I, we talked about all the pages. We've talked about unfolding the planner. Now we're going to the field. Okay, we're gonna to go to the field. Now we gotta get this thing started. 
So the reason I put the shortcut here is because this kind of gives me everything I need to start the planner, to get it down on the ground and get planning. So when I open it up, of course, if you've got a PTO power generation, get your PTO on. This one's hydraulic, um, so it should be fine. But then you can turn on your EPG, power your system. You can also get your vacuum target set in here. And then right here underneath that, you can prime and fill your meters. So you got yourself unfolded and right down this right-hand side, you got everything kind of fired up, ready to go. Instead of punching in through five different home pages, it's all right here. Um, regarding vacuum, I would say, so this one is also uh, capable, I mentioned automation. So awesome feature, if you're on a John Deere tractor um, and you are able to individually plumb each of your vacuum motors into an SCV, we need to turn this on and set this. Um, what it allows you to do is instead of you fiddling with your hydraulic controls for flow to determine, you know, get your vacuum pressure to settle where you want it to be, you set the target vacuum, it controls the hydraulic flow for you throughout the whole day, okay? So to set that up, you tap the vacuum button here and you see it says manual mode. So we have to go into the SCV settings to set up the automation. We're gonna do automated SCV control. And it's gonna ask me to go ahead and hit next here. And now you gotta kind of configure it. So you gotta tell it how the planner is plumbed, okay? So on one, we, well, I don't have the other one. So on three, is where my vacuum one is, and on four is where vacuum two is. So I'll say okay. So now, if we hit next, actually I'm gonna go back a step. This is also where I, remember I told you about the easy fold for frame control? If you wanted to set that up, we can also hit automated here. And we could set both of these up kinda at the same time. We'll hit next, go back into edit settings. This is what I was trying to do. Here's where I tell it that my you know, frame is on one, and my marker is on two, okay? So it'll ask us, it's gonna kinda of confirm our settings. It's gonna ask us to set flow on those SCVs before we put them into auto mode at seven for the vacuums, 10 for the frame control stuff. And then when we hit next again, it's gonna tell me to cycle power. When I cycle power and then power the whole system back up, you will then, I'm gonna cancel because I don't wanna lose connection here. But when I power the whole system back up, all these will say auto underneath them. And you're not gonna be able to control flow on them at all, okay? The system's gonna do it for us, okay? You, essentially, you left, you left your number one and two at full flow, and then it's gonna regulate the flow for the vacuums for us automatically. So once those go to auto, we're back in here at seed star level, we're gonna come in here, and it, it looks a little different here too. You're just gonna have set target in here because right now it's just reading pressure it's in manual mode you're messing with it now you'll have two boxes one that says target and actual and you're going to say hey i need 15 inches pressure here and, it, and you, you'll hear the system kind of ramp up slow down and kind of settle right at that 15. so that it's a very very nice feature get it turned on so that's the automation piece also thinking about getting started in the field you know first day Crop type, seed disc, those sort of things. That's right here on this screen as well. You use a 32 cell disc on this planter, 64 for beans. Um, also in here, getting your rates turned on and enabled, everything's gonna get punched in and kill a seed. So 36, 32, 28, you know, is the equivalent. So that looks a little different. To add a rate, if you're doing flat rates, um, Make sure, so I'll, I'll punch in a 32 here. If I hit okay, it doesn't show up. You, like every year, I forget this part, right? Uncheck it to enable it then. And now it's one of your options. So that's how you get them in there. And these will carry over to the home page later too. But once again, quick way to find it quick and change your rate. I think I'm gonna come back to this planner details button now and spend some time here. So, <clears throat> I like this page, um, A, because it always has population on the bottom, okay? And we'll get, we'll kind of, and I always just like to have an eye on my population. And then it gives me shortcuts at the top half to pretty much get into every other monitor or every other thing we need to set up. Typically, when I'm out helping a guy get started in the field, there's like a couple things that we're really concerned about. 
um, downforce and population, right? Is it planting? And I want to get my downforce set, okay? And we've already been outside the planter and we've probably um, set our depth. We've probably looked at our closing wheel pressure. We've probably made sure everything's um, level on the frame. You might have even came in here already and clicked on your row cleaners since this is active row cleaners um, and set those up. The way these are laid out is uh, the factory gives us three presets and it's light, medium, heavy for your residue. You can click into any of these presets. We're folded, it's not letting me do it, but you can click into any of these presets and tweak that pressure for yourself. But um, that, that's how you would initially get your row cleaner set for uh, your residue. Um, but more likely we're gonna get going in the field. We're gonna get the planter down, we're gonna take off. We're gonna go a little ways. And um, I would recommend putting in a target margin to get started for your downforce here. You do that by clicking on this. There's two ways you can go about this. So right now we're in active downforce mode. Our status is active. If I toggle this off, it's gonna say set point mode. The difference is this. When you're active, you're, you're setting your target in margin. Margin is the load on the sensor. So every one of those gauge wheels has a load sensor on it. It's measuring load, okay? And you, when you do your field check, set a target for that margin, and it's adjusting the system in active mode, more or less pressure, right, to maintain that target, okay? When we flip it off to set point mode, now we're just operating in pounds. We're just saying, hey, I want 200 pounds of downforce, okay? And it's just gonna, it's gonna put 200 pounds of hydraulic pressure on the whole, every row unit, and you're just, and nothing's changing, okay? It'll read margin, it'll give you a margin number, and you're gonna have a margin graph, but it's not actively adjusting your pressure in set point mode. So there's goods and bads to that. There's reasons you might wanna do, do that. Um, when I, some, some, some individuals will start in this mode and get a good feel, because they're more comfortable just dealing with down pressure. Our system, whether you had heavy duty springs, airbags, or hydraulic systems, have always been able to exert zero to 400 pounds of pressure. On a heavy duty spring, you had three notches, 125, 250, 400, okay? Um, I asked you to go back to those days of where you set things at, because this is no different, right? How much force, like what did a good job in years past? And that's a good, that's a good place to start, right? So if you're not comfortable, it's first time out, you could start there in standby mode and like, you know what? I usually just ran it on the first one. I got pretty good conventional till. You can run it like this, 125 pounds of downforce, go plant. And then you could come back and watch how much margin is created in the system at that rate. And then set that as your target and turn it back on. That's one way to get started. Okay, if, if some guys are, I have some guys that this is how they do it. Um, anymore, I've done this enough now that I've, I've gotten comfortable with the system that I will usually start with margin. I, I usually go in the low hundreds, honestly. I'm not one to overdo it for margin. Um, and I just set the margin, put the planter down, let's go plant. And then the beauty of this monitor is it tells me how many pounds of downforce it's given me at the 125. That's, that's what the second graph is here. So the first bar graph that you're looking at is your target margin and where you're at actually, right? Above and below that target on every row. The second one is a bar that starts from the bottom and builds up and it's from zero to 400 pounds of force. So based on your, so this is your gut check on the bottom, right? I've got my target set at 125 for margin. That's a load number, it's a relative number, right? But what it's actually creating in my system right now is 200 pounds of downforce or 75 pounds of downforce. It, it's hard telling, right? It depends on if you work this thing and work this thing and it's all mellow and beauty, you know, pretty, or if it's, you know, half disc stocks and, you know, a lot of residue and a little bit different profile, right? So, um, so that's, that's usually how I set it is I, and then I stop and I'll do a field check. Stop, take a look at your seat trench. At the end of the day, downforce is there to create consistent placement, right? We need consistent placement of that seed at the bottom of the trench every time, right? Row cleaners get the residue out of the way. Downforce helps us firm the sidewalls. So we're consistently in the same place every time. Um, 
if we're not, and those walls are crumbling, you need more margin. You need more downforce, right? Um, if they're perfect, and there's a lot of moisture in your soil, you might take a look at that and see if you can do it with less, okay? At the end of the day, downforce doesn't create compaction. It's the presence of moisture with downforce that creates compaction. And last year we had some really dry conditions planting. You probably could have put as much in there. I mean, you probably could have maxed the system out in some scenarios and still had, you know, loose trouble kind of getting things where they needed to be, okay? With the absence of moisture. So um, at least that was kind of the story out west. So it is all relative to your conditions. Um, you have to do a field check. You have to look at your seed trench. At the end of the day, more margin gives you more pressure, less margin, less pressure. Um, the, the graph at the bottom is your gut checked if you're comfortable with it or not. We custom farm at home for our neighbor. We plant his corn and beans. Uh, we have different tillage tools in the fall, right? Um, I can punch in the same 125 pounds of margin and it will be far less down pressure on our fields than what we what it uses on his okay just different styles of rippers okay different styles of you know cultivating in the spring so you also have a singulation and a spacing monitor on this screen so i don't look at these often because typically population if you're good you don't need to see this but they will light up like orange or red if there's problems so that's they're quickly right there for you the last one that i look at is the three dots um i that's a very technical term there but uh it gives you three more things to look at um Ride quality, something that we carried over from our old monitors, if you wanted to look at that. Okay, we're sitting still, we're at 100% ride quality. Um, we also have the curve compensation. This one's just for fun, I think. Uh, when we are steering around an intake or um, watching the system work, uh, it's gonna over, it's gonna speed up your outside motors and slow down your inside motors when you're going around. So you, can, you just can kind of graphically see the motor RPM there. Um, when that's active and then you want to make sure that's on and then lastly the, we have two different monitors for torque and rpm so we use this from a troubleshooting perspective so this is the torque on the the motors that are turning the meters in the belts so for example if we have a poor singulation on a row and we've been out and we've double checked our seal and our vacuum door and seed delivery looks good there's seed in the mini hopper and still kind of poor, you know, poor running. You might come watch this screen. You know, if the torque is, got your double limiter set. If your torque is uh, low on that one, maybe your hub tension's a little off and we need to increase hub tension on that. We use this one when we run off planners. Um, we watch all 24 rows and we try to set them, you know, relatively all the same, you know, from a torque perspective when we're adjusting hub tension. So uh, brush belt, you know, Brush belts eventually will wear out the backing or the, you know, the belts get worn or the, or the bristles will get worn. But if those start slipping or having trouble, you might see, you might catch that there. All those things will show up on your monitor as a singulation or a population problem, typically. So that's kind of everything in the details page there. Um, underneath the tools button, you have a couple of shortcuts. One that I'll point out here because we've already been into frame control, is this planter runoff procedure. Um, so basically your planter's a test stand. We can pretty much power anything up and turn, you know, we can run all the rows together, like a whole planter runoff, and we can simulate speed. So with planter raise seed in there, we can do a target and kind of check your population, singulation, make sure you're good to go there. So if you have one you need to adjust, you can. And then this row by row option. Um, if you have the Equipment Plus app on your phone, um, if your planner is new this year and it's a 5E or EE, it will have a wireless data server on it that allows us to remotely connect with a Wi-Fi connection to our phones and it will let us use this mobile button here and control it back here. So I have to come into this, I have to come into this test and I, instead you can hit start and you're going to be in the cab and it's going to start, right? Instead of hitting start, you're going to hit this mobile button and then you're going to get out with your app and make your connection with your app and control it back here. So you can walk down each one of them individually or just go to the problem row, row in the field and control that one from the app. Um, we have to activate your server to do that. And it's not hard, it's just, we do it all through the app. So there's a little bit of a procedure to it. 
If your planner is not brand new, um, we've been putting it on standard equipment for the last few years on exact emerges, and it's only been an option on five E's. So possible that you have it if, at home if, if uh, you got an exact emerge. Next, I'm gonna go into probably the work setup button because we haven't been there yet. So we've talked all about the planner monitor, but we'd be, you know, we can't forget about making maps, right? So every time we move to a new field, uh, we're going to <clears throat> want to make sure we pop into the work setup button. Hopefully you've sent your setup data to the, to the machine and you're going to want to choose your farm and field you're in. Make sure you update the variety you're planting. Um, <clears throat> you know, for fertilizer, get that all in here. So I got some junk in here right now. I got, basically I got like a test. I got a test farm in here right now and some varieties and I'm putting on 28% for starter. It doesn't make much sense. So what I have done before here um, is I've created a setup file in the Ops Center with a new tool called the Work Planner. So have you guys been using Ops Center to do setup files? Yes, no, a little bit. So before in Ops Center, Chad probably showed you, you go under the setup file creator, right? And you do like a bulk load of all your farms fields, your lines, your varieties. With a work plan, you can actually plan each field. I know that in this field, it's gonna be corn, it's gonna be this number. I have a script, or I know, it's, I know I'm gonna plan it at 32,000. And you can build a plan for each individual field and you can send them to the monitor. It's done, you can do this on, the beauty about a work plan is it's only compatible with Seedstar 4 or Gen 4. So that's what you guys all own. You can use it with your app or your iPad. You don't have to have be in front of your office computer. You can send it wirelessly, which is what I did. I'll show you, so I said that setup data lands under system and file manager, so it lands here. Um, I, it came from my John Deere, so receive files. So it says, it says all files imported because I have already imported it, but it landed here, I grabbed it, I hit next, I hit import. That's how I got it locally on my monitor. So any setup file you send, even the setup, the, what, the way we've been doing it for the last few years, you have to come here. If you send it, but you have to come here to get it in it, in the monitor, right? So you get that applied. Now, because this was a work plan, what makes it special is, you know, with a group load or a batch load of data, you still have to pick your farm and field, right? And you have to pick the variety from the list. So you still have a notepad in your cab, right? Or a printout in your cab. With a work plan, it's individualized by field. So I can come in here under work setup. Now in a perfect world, we're outside, we're under GPS, we're really close to the field. And if I have a boundary on that field with that plan, it's going to say, hey, it looks like you're close to the home farm. Do you want to use this plan? And I would say, okay. If you don't have a boundary, okay, or today I'm inside, if we navigate to our work list under the work setup button down there in the corner, that plan that I imported will show up under my planned list here. And you know, if you got 20 fields, you'll have 20 plans in here. And they're, you know, they'll all be named by your field. We're used to coming to this spot because this is where your work history is always at. So if you do, you, know, you start farming and then you leave because you get rained out, this is how you come back. This is how you come back to get your coverage. So same spot, just over on the plan side, I can grab it. So I had test in there before, right? So this is a plan for the home farm. I'm going to hit, uh, I can even hit work details here. It's going to tell me what we're doing. So 5200, 10340 for starter, got some lines. Okay, so we'll hit okay. Even has some notes in here for the operator or myself. And you see what happened? It's, lo it's slow. I, I preloaded everything in. So one push, all in. So new feature. Um, now, if it changes, it changes. You can always go punch a different number back in. So, so that's how that works. Uh, so I've been through locations, you know, obviously, and here is our recording information, our, our, what, we're, what we're documenting. I should probably talk about equipment profiles and then we'll talk about section control and we'll wrap up. So equipment profiles reside underneath the work setup button. Um, at the beginning of the season, especially if you're pulling your planter out of the shed and uh, it's like year two, year three with it, 
make sure you pop in here under both of your equipment profiles and make sure those numbers look accurate. If you're keeping a written log in the book, um, they should stick and hold. They, they save to the, like if you got late model R's, they save into the controllers or in the planner, they save into the controller. So when you hook them back together, they should be there. If you're having any trouble at all with section control, this is where you need to come first to make sure these numbers are accurate. Um, when in doubt, th these are your GPS offsets, right? So when in doubt, if you don't know exactly what we should be measuring, tap the box. It's gonna give us instructions of where we should be measuring and verifying those measurements at, okay? So we got some general measurements for this four track. We have some GPS offsets, so measurements in relationship to the receiver and how it sits on the tractor. And then lastly, connection offsets. And we walk through all these measurements inside this book here. So it walks you, honestly, all, those, all the pages and things that we've been talking about are in this book. Um, so long story short, make sure under connection offsets, if your planner is going to be connected with the draw bar, that the draw bar number is accurate. If your planners are going to be a three-point planner or two-point planner, um, they, that, met, that number is accurate as well. And we'll flip over to the equipment pro or the implement profile, the planner profile. So we make your measurement for the draw bar over underneath the tractor, but you got to make sure you select it here under the planner. And I've seen this screw us up before. We've got this wrong one checked and it's, it's different numbers. So all of a sudden your section control is off by a foot and you're like two feet. So, um, and then lastly, uh, there's a couple dimensions that we need to do our center of rotation. That's from your draw bar to your frame wheels. That's about 22 feet on a DB planner, a DB60. And then work point, that's where, where the section control is going to turn on and off. That's your seat tubes, brush belts, 26 feet is a good number, good number for a DB60 as well. So, okay, while we're here, if you keep going down, um, mechanical delay, I just wanted to point out, like they show, like on off times is what we used to work with, with section control. You'll see these here and you'll be inclined to want to adjust them here. We're not going to do any adjusting for section control under these mechanical delays. We're going to use the app to do any adjustments in the field and it'll, it'll do the adjusting for us here. Okay, so don't touch this number here. Um, last, if you are doing implement guidance this year, or trying to record for AutoPath. I didn't show the other groups this, but this is where you would add your implement receiver measurements in and get that all configured if you are doing implement guidance. With the auto, you need the automation activation on your monitor to do that. Okay, so we save this all out. And that's, that's your implement profile. So now we're ready to go tune our section control. We can go to the menu and hit applications, go down to the section control app. All right. Oh, I got such a delay, I'm sorry. I'm yakking away and clicking buttons. So, um, feature this year, you can, if you have a bad boundary, okay, Gen 4, or feature with Gen 4s. If you have a bad boundary in your field and it's causing trouble, you can turn them off. They're still there. You just, it's not going to look at them. Okay, so if something didn't get quite done right, uh, you're farming it a little bit different, you can disregard them inside the section control app. So that's a nice feature. Used to be you just had to turn off your section control and plant through it, right? You just... All right, tuning it. So you, we now have, you've got your overlap settings, which we're used to. We have performance tuning. Kind of walks you through what a skip and an overlap is. But second page is a worksheet. So now inside the app, when we tune section control, it actually just gives us, I call it a worksheet. We fill it out. It's going to figure out the time for us. Okay. So no more of the shot in the dark. Do I move this a 10th of a second or a hundredth of a second? You know, how many feet is that when I'm going eight miles an hour? I don't know. So here entering planted area, this is your off time, right? You're going into the headland. You're turning off the planner. You just need to let it know what, what you're seeing in the field when you're digging. Is it a skip? Is it an overlap? How big? How fast were you driving? Same way, coming out of the planted area. So we're now we're turning on the planter. We're putting the planter back down, going back into the field. Did I have a skip? Did I have an overlap? How big? How fast was I going? It'll do the math for us. When you hit next, it's going to pop up a box that says, hey, 
I took your mechanical delay for your on from 0.12 to 0.16. Or I took your off to whatever. I typically, I mean, usually I'm only doing one at a time because I'll get myself confused and put stuff in the wrong box. Um, but when I'm tuning, I typically, when that box pops up, I usually snap a picture of it because if for some reason I get backwards that day and I go the wrong direction, I know where we were. So that's my tip of the day. You can always go back to where you were.